Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Welcome one, welcome all. It's good to see you Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Center of Light Radio. It's good to be back with this new show, new platform, new software. I love software. I'm a computer geek. Not as geeky as I'd like to be, but nonetheless. Coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world on the internet, thanks to the marvel of technology. I am coming at you live from my little bitty old guest house, as you can see, in Memphis, Tennessee. You're listening to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Enfoldment and Reinforcement, Radio for the Soul and the Transformation Station. Strap in all my brother and sister astronauts as we launch for inner space. I have a super duper show for you. Uh, I did. I forgot to tell my guest today that we are an, actually a two-hour format now, but we can go as long as she likes. Um, something I got to write down. You see, it's always a learning curve for me. Things are always new. So we're going to get that. Changes afoot, y'all. Listen up. Lots of changes afoot. If you look out and about around in the world, if you look within your side, side of yourself, and they are not separate from one another, each other, you can tell. You can feel it. And all it takes is just a little moment to breathe into the space and you'll feel, you'll feel the movement. You'll feel the voice of spirit just forever, just wanting to connect with you. And in all that movement, it, it's, a, it's a contrast. It's a focal point that we can use to fall into the silence. And when you fall into that silence, it is forever. In there is everything you could possibly want. Again, welcome to the show, everyone in the chat room. I do appreciate you. Like I said, changes of foot, burst of light, live videos that you've helped me to create for the last year and a half. Thank you very much. Because of you, I'm able to soon put out a brand new book called Radical Transformation, Crossing the Bridge to the Soul. And those who, are, who participate in my Burst of Light live presentations, you've seen the expansion not only with myself and the work and the dialogue um, that's transpiring, but also within yourselves. So congratulations to you, and I appreciate you for being a part and playing in that arena of soul right there. The arena of soul with me, because that's where I'm moving to. That's where I'm beating my feet, is to live in the garden. You can bet on that. Very soon, I have an opportunity. In fact, it is my greatest hope that I could finish this project this week to submit both of my books, The Divine Principle, as well as my book about this holy man in the window behind me, Safiya Sai Baba, My Surgeon to India. We're going to put those as a compilation in this new book. We're going to pull the books apart and put them in a timeline, the story of my life from the beginning up to the present moment. It's going to be called Homecoming, Playing in the Garden of Soul. And there's going to be three parts to it, initiation, integration, and graduation. And 5D is opening up for me, y'all. It's opening up, and it doesn't look like what you think. It does not look like what I thought either. Because it's not necessarily the world and the outside that changes. It's not like the outside at all. It's an inverted experience. It's the cause of the universe. It's infinite. It's forever. It's a different way of seeing. Completely different way of seeing. And in turn... The outside world does seem to have a deeper, richer luster about it. You can see hues that you could have never seen before. Powerful stuff, yeah? Stick around long enough, and hopefully we will meet in that arena, in that garden, and play together. RPM, recognize, plug in, and manifest your life. Go to centeroflightradio.com. Bottom of the page, you'll see a red Ferrari. Click on that Ferrari to take you to another page, which is recognize, plug in, and manifest your life. Once we begin to recognize what all this is and what's happening in the outside world, at least what we think it is, isn't. And what we think isn't likely is. Right? <laughs> okay, Kelly, you can laugh. It's all good. <laughs> so the idea of sending you to RPM, once we recognize what that thing is, what it is, what that consciousness is, where it's at, and how we can begin to not only see it, but get a handle on it and experience and taste it, initiate ourselves, integrate, and begin, we begin to graduate. And then once we begin to recognize that we can plug into it, simply just plug in with mere intention. <sighs> 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 
and you ask, are you with me? And simply it says, I am, and you hear it. And why would you ever want to deny that conversation? It's that simple. You've done it. There is no more work to do except get better at the integration process. Because you can bet if you're hearing the sound of my voice wherever you are, you are being initiated. Not only because of me, I only represent one of millions of light workers here to bring you home. And here's the benefit. In the vehicle you know as your body, you get best of both worlds. You don't have to die to do it. We are already connected to soul, and now it's about becoming conscious. Because if you were disconnected from the source of who you are, your soul, you could not exist. You would go out just like a light, just like that, and be done. And that's impossible. Universal law says you have always existed, you exist now, and you will forever exist. You, there's no escape. You're in this for real, whether you know it or not. One moment, I have an audio issue. I'm learning. I'm going to fix something really quickly. Thank you, everyone, for being here. One moment. There we go. Back at it. Um, are you a spiritual seeker looking to move in effortless ease? Again, go back to RPM. When you get there, you're going to learn what you'll be able to create and what it's all about. You get one-on-one on one time with me. If you want to find out a little bit more about this program, basically get your feet wet, you can send me an email at keithanthonyblanchard at gmail.com and say, Keith, I would love a free session with you and we'll get you on your way. You want greater degrees of intuition. You want to move through a block. Whatever it may be, you lost a job and need some financial abundance. I have come with a bag of spiritual tricks. To, I'm telling you, you're going to contact me very shortly and go, oh, my God, Keith, these things are working. I'll say, well, you know, I know. That's why I've been doing this 25 plus years. I had some, oh, I got a couple more adverts. We'll get right down to the show. I have just been blessed the other day by some powerful information that makes my heart zippity doo dah, makes my heart sing. This beautiful man, Swamji Viswayogi, God realized man, is coming back to Memphis at the end of summer. And I have a meeting tomorrow night with myself and T.M. Garrett and my dear sister, India friend, uh, Anjana. And we're going to create a program of what's going to take place. It's going to be an audio video interview, as I always do with Swamji. And T.M. Garrett of Pick Media Arts is going to be uh, doing all the videography and stuff. And when you're in the presence of a man like this, dear Lord, those who have experienced it, you become engulfed with the light and you become impregnated with powerful seeds that in, in the future will begin to blossom within you. And you will know that when this transpires and you find yourself connected to a master who will begin to whisper sweet somethings in your ear and life just changes. So Swanji is coming back to town. I am so excited about that. And also... June 24th, I'm going to do a radical transformation presentation here in Memphis, Tennessee at 6 p.m. Admission is $20. We're going to be in close proximity, y'all. And I'm going to make contact with all of you on a soul level. And I'm going to begin to draw all the energy in. And I'm going to be the glue that intentionally spins the energy and plugs us all in. Right? And then it becomes palpable and you can feel it. And then I'm going to begin to move the energy. I'm going to begin to push. And you will be able to feel it. And when I feel guided, I may walk up to you, put my hand wherever it needs to be placed, says intuition. And I'm going to begin to push. And I'm going to open up these portals, these chakras that my guest is going to be talking about as well tonight. So that's June 24th, 6 p.m. Memphis, Tennessee. $20 admission. Can't beat it. Can't beat it. Let's get down to Center of Light Radio Business. Let me tell you about my guest today. <clears throat> On Center of Light Radio, my guest is Kelly Marie Kerr, and we're going to be talking about candlesticks, chakras, and the powers of seven. Let me tell you about her. She's a mummy. <laughs> she's from England, or at least the UK. So she's a mummy. Wife, writer, actor, producer. Kelly Marie writes films and television scripts with RestlessByNature.com. The subjects of the programs vary from Indigo Children, love that, to the immigrants, to the immigrant debates of the UK, Kelly Marie is also an actress. Her first appearance being in the BBC period drama, He Knew He Was Right, 
as Molly the maid in her favorite role was as Titania Queen of the Fairies in The Tales of Albion, written and directed by the talented Gary Andrews. As a producer, Kelly Marie created a short film in 2016 called Denise, which was very successful. More recently, Kelly has gone on to create Seek Vision, which is a platform to share the allegorical translation of Bible scripture. This is going to blow you away. This show is going to blow you away in ways you never envisioned possible. How this could be a puzzle that she is truly fitting together and the, the inventor or the pioneer of it. She is extremely passionate about this platform and believes that God is too. Kelly loves nothing more than going to dreamland, dig that, and witnessing incredible visions as I, I love it, I love it when I, I get excited every time I lay my head, my head on the pillow, that she uses to fuel her life in writing, putting pen to paper, sticking her nose into a good book, watching inspiring movies, connecting the dots, connecting the dots of her destiny, meeting kindred spirits via divine appointment, and following the straight and narrow road to heaven on earth. You can find more about my guest today, Kelly Marie Kerr, at www.seekvision.co.uk. Welcome to Center of Light, dear. Hi. Good to see you again, Keith. Good to see you. How are things going with you? Really good. Thank you very much for having me. Um, last time we talked about the amazing sacred secretion and how the ruler of the universe blesses us with this incredible Christ oil or rescuing oil, which is translated from the word Jesus Christ. Um, 12 times a year offering us healing and enlightenment and um, today we're just going to expand on that a little bit um, looking into Revelation um, 1 um, a lot deeper and the significance of the seven candlesticks um, which basically translate to the seven known chakras or the subtle body um, that exists within all of us. If you would remind myself and the listening audience about the last time you were on Center of Light Radio, the just give me an overview of the Christ oil, the anointing, that beautiful dialogue that you share with me. Okay, so um, the the foundation of it comes from um, the fact that um, the name Jesus Christ actually translates to um, rescuing oil in the Hebrew um, word for um, Christ actually is Masiach, which means to anoint with or smear with oil. So um, people have, you know, come to know that as a physical smearing of oil where we would go to the front of church or, you know, to gatherings and have this olive oil or equivalent poured on us physically but that doesn't actually do anything i mean it does represent something absolutely incredible but it's what's happening internally that is what the bible is truly speaking of um, and all of the ancient um, writings pertain to this and acknowledge this and um, it's just a truly beautiful thing. Once a month, um, when the sun enters your star sign, um, you will receive this anointing um, from however you, you prefer to call it. Um, in India, it's known as prana. Scientists tend to refer to it as luminiferous ether um, or, you know, or the Christ oil, which is seems to be, you know, the the now sort of Christian way to refer to it. Um, and what it does is it travels all the way down from our claustrum, which is the seat of all consciousness, um, through our spine, which is basically the River Jordan, down to the sacral um, pump, um, the lowest chakra. And there's a a pump in the sacral vertebrae that is known as the sacred bone. And what it does is it vibrates with um, another pump that's actually in our throat. 
And what it does is it draws that oil back up um, to the, the vagus nerve and the spine into the optic thalamus. And if we have successfully preserved that um, sacred oil, then we receive um, this incredible clarity and it, it I mean it's just absolutely indescribable um everybody that i know who has um had this experience has described it actually in a different way which i think is even more beautiful because it's a very personal thing um and, and i've heard that some people have um compared it as well to the experience, a similar experience to DMT, because that's what it actually does um, physiologically is produces DMT in our brain and activate dormant brain cells and create new blood cells. So essentially what it's doing is bringing the whole body to life in a way that it's not used to um, operating in so it just makes you feel 10 times more alive than ever and that is the true that's the true crucifixion of Christ crucify doesn't actually mean you know to be put to death it means to be magnified and yes a sacrifice does have to be made if your body becomes too acidic during those two and a half days which are the two and a half days that the oil is in the body then the oil will dissolve um, and and you won't be able to raise it and have this experience now there's so many ways that we can acidify our bodies one of those ways is through food um, and and poor quality water um, and another one of those ways um, that you know people think less of is is emotional um, and that's really what the Bible's describing when it talks about our sins. Um, it's, yes, obviously the sins that we do, you know, do have a negative effect on other people and cause hurt and pain. And, and that is a really, really good reason, you know, to be a good person. But also what it does to us internally in the science of our body is absolutely incredible. I mean, the two main stress hormones, um, cortisol and epinephrine, are massive in terms of the effects of disease and lethargy and um, lack of focus and just just everything that isn't helpful for us in life whatever it is that we want to achieve whether it's you know just to be a great mum or to be you know an an athlete like it's it's the way that we are and the way that we treat ourselves and treat others actually you know really just makes us so much more able to operate at this high level um, physically and you know it's the Christ oil being able to raise it um, successfully it, it, it has a lot to do with who you know you become as a person and how you learn to let things go and, Kelly, and heal through the, excuse me through this, through this work that you're doing even though it always impl it implies internal and in, meaning internally referenced in all the changes and all the expansion modalities happen within do you believe av as above so below that this was also a true historical event that took place through christ the anointing I do. I 100% believe in the physical Christ. Um, I believe that he was a man who lived among us. I believe that he performed many incredible miracles. I believe that, you know, he was sacrificed because, I don't know, people weren't ready or, or what exactly. Um, and I believe that his spirit surrounds us now, as do many spirits. And... Um, incredibly like even above that physical layer so you've got the internal layer and then you've got the historical christ layer on top of that you've got the fact that there are seven planets 
and seven stars of Pleiades, and that they actually send another power down to Earth, which also, you know, gives us so much energy and so much life. And, and modern day scientists actually believe that the Pleiades has a, a significant amount of um, uh, connection to the seat of creation. Well, they, there, were, there were seven sisters in the Pleiades. Yeah. They call them the seven sisters. Yeah. And these, the orbits and the geomet geometric shapes that are created by these seven planets and the seven stars, that's what actually causes the rotation of the subtle energies within us. So we're an exact reflection of what's happening in the cosmos, which is just... I mean, wow. That just goes to show what I what I always say and what many people say. It's connectivity. We're all connected. Everything is connected as above, so below. Nothing mm -hmm. is excluded. What you see in the outside world is only a reflection of your inner self. So if we're standing next to each other and you're seeing chaos and disorder and terrorism, and I'm, I'm seeing something beautiful and peaceful all unfolding, how is that possible? because it's an internal dynamic dance that you, it's a relationship you have with the external world and actually it's really a relationship you have with yourself mm -hmm. yeah a hundred percent i mean it says in the bible that there is no power other than than light that god is everything and god is good and you know literally the word god means good so good. That is yeah. all goodness. So, well, even in this time of chaos, and I, we can use that word chaos because it's a word to describe language and it helps understand something we're trying to uh, depict to each other. I get it. Mm -hmm. But when we take that word and it turn it inward and it ex excises in such a way, it just causes nothing but trouble and havoc. Well, then if God is everywhere, how can you be seeing chaos? <laughs> well, I believe that it's our fault, you know. Yeah, absolutely. It's not. It's got nothing to do with God. It actually deeply upsets me when people say, "Why do? Why does God let this happen?" Then Kelly, if there's a God, and I always say, "Well, God's letting it happen because He gave us free will, or because you know we have this power to decide, or the polarity, if you want to say it in a scientific way." Um, you know, it's a law of nature to have one and the other, and we are the driver of that vessel that makes those decisions. So we can choose to do right, we can choose to be compassionate, we can choose to be giving, just the same as we can choose to be greedy or choose to, you know, allow suffering to continue and war to continue. You know, human beings are the ones that are responsible for this chaos as we choose to call it tonight share with our listening audience please how this all came about for you because all the information is go good and groovy but i think equally important is what happened inside of you why did this thing happen what brought you to this place of discovering this i'm gonna call it a technology this technology of looking at your inner self in such a way it's another rung of the ladder that you can use as a catalyst to launch you deeper into your spirituality. Tell how this happened for you, dear. Um, for me, it was through a series of vivid dreams, undeniable dreams. One of them um, is actually what my website is named after, Seek Vision. I just heard the voice of God saying, Seek Vision, Seek Vision, Seek Vision. And I woke up and just thought, what is Sikh vision? It sounds so simple, like I'm I'm looking for things and, you know, I have vision because I can see. So, you know, what does that mean? And I just slowly started to unpack those two words and the etymology of them and, and what they mean and where they come from and seeking, you know, it's not something that you stop doing ever. It's, it's continuous. So, you know, we have as humans a tendency to get to certain um, milestones and think that's it. I've made it now, but actually it's, you know, it's this, 
desire to keep going and to keep learning more and to keep letting more go and to keep, you know, realizing this idea of no attachment more and more deeply so that our personal relationship with God, you know, it almost becomes transparent. And then the word vision, I came to realize, you know, it has nothing to do really with our physical sight, but everything to do with our supernatural sight, what's happening on the inside. So for me, those two words, seek vision, just, you know, brought me leaps and bounds along the way. I mean, I'd always been a big researcher and a big reader and a big lover of God and the Bible and, you know, just worshipping and fellowshipping and being around people that, you know, make me feel good and make me want to know more and, um, you know, to bless people. And I've always um, I've always been amazed to see the power of prayer and and how, you know, I, I actually heard a um, an amazing answer to a prayer a couple of weeks ago when a group of us were praying for a kidnapped child to be returned home and this was in South Africa and a day later um, thank God the the little girl was returned to her parents um, without any ransom having to be paid and you know this is the thing our vibrations are a literal thing like prayer isn't like dear god outside of me please do this thing for me it's the belief and the the understanding that it can happen with the will that's happening you know through the manifestation of all the energy that's coming through the solar plexus and the divine energy that's flowing through us continually, like we are altering those photons. It's a true fact. Welcome back, everyone. Keith Anthony Blanchard, host of Light Radio with my guest tonight, Miss Kelly Marie Kerr, and we're talking about candlesticks, chakras, and the power of seven. And I would like to move into that segue now, if that's okay with you, Kelly. Fantastic. Lay it out. <laughs> she has a brand new video out. She does these really, really cool videos. And you can tell she's passionate about what she does because you see all that is involved with the making, the creation of these little jewels. I love them. And you can tell that she's passionate. And through her passion, that's where the magic happens. Tell us about this new video that you have that I just completely adore. This is going to blow you away. The alignments are just truly. Okay, so the sacred secretion video, which was the first one that I put on YouTube, basically started a huge amount of commentary um, and debate and people asking questions like, um, and obviously, you know, wanting to know more evidence and have it explained in more depth. And so I really just was asking myself and, you know, God and meditating and praying on it what what is next what would you like me to do next because the sacred secretion video was a divine task that god sent me to do he gave me a very clear um vision of this video that should be black and white and it should be very clear um and you know it should be undeniable in terms of the factual content and and just jam pack it as much as possible you know with with valid reasoning um so i think i managed to do it justice although there are a couple of glitches in there um so with this one i just really wanted to listen to what people were asking and try to um address the questions because i know as as somebody myself who always has questions and you know is always looking for answers and and various things that it's sometimes hard to find um a source that you feel like you can trust um so i just really wanted to take revelations apart step by step because that's where the main um as far as i've come to understand so far um the main um, information about the sacred secretion is hidden. Um, as to why it's hidden, 
I don't know. <laughs> I get people asking me this a lot. Um, I have no idea. Um, I guess some people think that it's because um, it was written at a time when people weren't ready to have this kind of responsibility. Whereas now in the age of Aquarius, we are a lot, all, a lot um, more compassionate and we've seen a lot more and been affected by a lot more things. So we're now a much more caring and responsible peoples. Um, I like that idea. But yeah, with Revelation, you know, you always, there's thousands of YouTube videos that say, oh, this is when this is going to happen, and this means that's going to happen, and we're all going <laughs> to die then, and right. what's the point of even continuing with my job because I'm going to die anyway? And I just think it's such doom and gloom. And I just, I guess deep down, I never really believed it um, and whether or not there is going to be um, an Armageddon of sorts or not I don't care I think confident. it's happening and that's not blaming the outside world that's not staying steadfast and planning in it I just think it's happening I mean you know you ask someone who ha has a serious time in their life right now God bless him Anthony Bourdain he was living Armageddon yeah and some people are living heaven on earth yeah yeah for sure i mean i think the things that are happening are just unthinkable and i'm hoping that you know this awakening that i'm witnessing is just going to continue from strength to strength and that you know the collective vibration is going to be raised and that the light workers and the empaths and the teachers among us are going to continue to raise one another up and you know the world is going to benefit from that in a massive way i mean i some of my dreams you know show the stars being brighter the trees being greener the animals being you know bigger stronger and i think that's really the way that it's meant to be so you know Kelly, that's yeah. what i said a minute ago when i was describing what it feels like and i was bragging that i'm moving into 5d that's what it, it, it's just what you described the, the stars are brighter the trees have more green everything is just so much more full to the like 10th the effulgence of 10th sort of like what it was truly intended to be at its fullest potential yes yes yes, yes. yes. and you can't yes. you can, that's the only way we can just kelly and i or for those out there that we can describe to others words only tend to soil what you mm -hmm. you're experiencing because you really can't convey in human di dynamic in terms what it feels like to be living in that open gate mm-hmm yeah and it's almost like um i felt uh, actually this morning in meditation that um, the tetrahedron which is this well there's two there's one that's a triangle and then there's the star tetrahedron which is the two triangles sort of on top of each other um, they were all turning and it was like all of the light was bounding through them and reflecting out into multiple angles and it was making everything just seem illuminous and we were all <laughs> angelic and it was just uh, i didn't want to wake up from that one <laughs> and you know in, in the tetrahedron also the star of david yes and here's yeah. the thing there's one triangle up and there's one down and it implies a unity between you and god because the one that has the apex up is us reaching up metaphorically of course because god mm -hmm. is not up and the other one's reaching down so there is always a communication between you and spirit it's just a fact that we become conscious of it or not mm -hmm. love yeah. it and you can see it as well in the fish uh the christian fish and the, <laughs> yes. the candlestick the matheros um when you put them back to back it creates exactly the same shape so it's just it's everywhere really it's hiding in plain sight as they say <laughs> It's probably the geometry that, well, in fact, it is, because the tetrahedron is supposed to be God. And so it's probably the glue that's holding everything together. Yeah. The geometric truly shapes. Is. Yeah, truly is. So, yeah, back to Revelation. So, um, yeah, for now, I mean, I'm working further into the chapters, but this video that I put out um, a couple of weeks ago um, focuses just on the first chapter. 
Um, it is a quite a long video, um, it's just over an hour, but I really just didn't want to skim any of it. I really just wanted to unpack it and show the root of each of the phrases and the words so that, you know, people can really see it for themselves and understand it. Uh, because the power of seven is massive. It's just such a huge thing. You know, when you talk about the platonic solids, um, you know, people talk about the main four, but, you know, I believe that there's seven if you include the sphere and the void and the um, he hector tetron. Yeah, I think that's the one. Um, so they all go round together and make up the flower of life. And then you've also got, you know, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, Mercury, the sun and the moon. And they all correspond to, guess what, seven days of the week. You've got Sunday, sun, day, Saturday, Saturn, day. And, you know, then we've got these same seven chakras going through our bodies and they're each um, dealing with a different aspect of our physical experience that we're having on the earth um, and we can change those if we're experiencing them as negative things because of the challenges that we face then what they can do what we can do is transform them um, into positives and that's the seven virtues and that's what helps with the raising of the sacred secretion and the personal knowing of god the seven chakras we're talking about the power of seven yes they also vibrate well they each have a, one of the seven colors of the visible rainbow spectrum and they also resonate to one of the seven notes on the major musical scale starting at the bottom the red one is c next upward is d e f and so forth and so on <laughs> so yes. seven is pretty doggone pop the lucky number seven yes yeah i'm sure it's no coincidence that this all just falls into place it's seven seals as well right. in Revelation. There's seven horns, there's seven trumpets. I mean, it's just seven, seven, seven. And um, the Hebrew name for God, Elohim, actually means seven. Um, <laughs> and guess what? Elohim appears 33 times um, in the Old Testament. And that is the same number of vertebrae that we have and the same number of degrees in each um, section of the circle that makes up the sphere, which is, you know, whether it's flat or 3D, who knows, that um, makes up the earth and, you know, the planet. So all of these things are just mirrored over and over and over again. And the patterns are there for us to, to see and to notice. And it, it's undeniable. So if we would, let's move into that section, the section where we start putting all this together as far as the candlesticks, what is their involvement, um, the chakras and the power of seven. Though we are doing that, I would like you to go through the chakras, if you would, and show the relationship they have to this entire unfoldment. Okay, no problem. Um, so in relation to Revelation 1, um, is uh, I think it's verse 11 that says, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the first, the last, um, and send send it to the seven churches, which are in Asia. So the seven churches um, relate to the physical part of those seven chakras. So at each chakra, there is also a physical gland that does something very important for our body. So you have the root chakra, which is the gonad gland, and that's in the coccyx. Then you have the sacral chakra, that's the linden gland, uh, solar plexus chakra, um, that's in the lower admin, um, that's the adrenal glands, um, the, the heart chakra, that's the thymus gland, um, then you have the throat chakra, um, which is the thyroid gland, the brow chakra, that's the pituitary gland, 
Um, and then finally, you have the crown chakra, which is the pineal gland. So um, each of those churches is doing some and a very important job for our body. Um, so Euphius was the first church. So that's the root chakra. And Euphius, um, biblically, it was concerned with survival. And um, also that is our chakra that is blocked by fear. So it's, um, it's learning to let go of fear or perceived fear, things that we believe are going to happen by trying to predict the future or trying to assume what somebody thinks of us or, um, you know, letting a memory of something bad that's happened replay, therefore paralyzing us, you know, against living life to its fullest. That's what that root chakra, the Church of Euphius, is all about. It's it's forsaken its first love. Um, so it's, you know, unblocked. I am loved. I am free. I am healed. Everything, um, you know, it's, it's very important, I believe, not to say something like um, I am no longer fearful because what your subconscious is hearing at that point is I am fearful because it will only pick out those prominent words. So it's actually forgetting the word fearful altogether forget the thought of fear altogether just absolutely eradicate it from your mind every time you even have like um, an inkling of fear or anything that could inhibit you just stop take a deep breath and think about something that makes you feel peace that makes you feel freedom and and use that instead to your advantage there may be um, some work that needs to be done to release fear. And that's not, um, I don't mean work in terms of um, sort of, I don't know, the more traditional terms. What I mean is just casting your mind back to what it could be that's inhibiting you and actually affirming that that has been let go and and just giving it to god giving it giving it back and and letting it dissolve in it can be transmuted back into positivity and, and and light and you know all of these things are a lesson so it's taking away what what we've achieved and letting so why, the why would one care to do this what is the point of all this in other words someone's coming along and they have their their life is as they know it, and it's cool but what is what is the purpose of all this? Why would we care about all that information? What what benefit does it have? I mean, it, it's really because every single person that I know, including myself, has some kind of hang up about something or another. It could be their weight. Um, it could be about um, you know not being able to find love in a partner or not feeling respected by friends or not really being able to achieve um, success in the workplace or even having physical ailments. Um, you know, they're all part and parcel of this, you know, divine natural law that exists within us. It's all a sort of, um, if it's if it's all going wrong, then it's a vicious circle and it's going to continue to go wrong. So by breaking that pattern, what we're doing is we're inviting the new, we're inviting the process from the root upwards. So basically we're connecting back to God consciously. Yeah, exactly. Straight back to God. I mean, God created these centers. Um, he created these glands. So, you know, why? And he, and it says that our bodies are the temple and that we should honor God by honoring our bodies. So, you know, that's what it's all about. If, you know, people ask me a lot about um, how do I, you know, eat an alkaline diet? 
And yeah, that is very important. Um, just purely because disease can't really grow in an alkaline environment. So, you know, it, it is paramount. But this emotional stuff, if you're getting the diet right, but you're not letting go and really embracing life and l keeping yourself in, in a perpetual state of gratitude and high frequency, then I don't know if you're really going to be able to have the enlightenment or the, the the experiences that you know people are seeking to have i'm sure that there are exceptions i you know i'm just speaking from my personal experience but um you know i think that these things about letting go they wouldn't have been put there these signs this information it wouldn't be there for us to find if it wasn't so important Totally, completely. So let's move up the chakra scale, can we? <laughs> okay, so the second church um, is Smyrna, um, and that's concerned with pleasure, and it's blocked by guilt, um, and that's the linden gland in the lower abdomen. Um, and it's the char church or the part of us that su suffers from persecution. Um, so, you know, guilt is well i mean it's obvious in a way we do something bad and we feel terrible about it but what's happening um inside of our bodies is all of these negative hormones are being secreted and the positive ones are being eaten up and it's manifesting as 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 disease um as tiredness as you know just different degrees of unhealth unhealth that's not a word <laughs> um yeah not being well <laughs> <laughs> i'm really really enjoying this because this is new information for me and i i love learning it opens up doors inside of me and i'm just i'm just taking this all in because i don't want to talk too much i just want you to keep rolling because i don't want to interrupt this process because you're in such a really cool flow looking at this chakra chart as i'm hearing you talk it's sort of bringing things home together for me that I've long forgotten about. Okay, cool. Right. Okay. Well, the third church um, is the Church of Pergamum, and that's our solar plexus, and it's concerned with willpower. So, you know, when you say you get a gut feeling um, or, you know, you're hungry for it, that's all to do with the stomach. Um, and it gets the willpower willpower gets blocked by shame now shame and guilt um they're very different um although you know they are linked to very similar experiences so you could say oh i feel ashamed i feel guilty but actually shame um inhibits us in a different way to guilt because what it does is it sort of stops us from being able to recognize who we truly are it's the, shame is what i believe lets in a lot of the lies that we hear um you know that we sort of tell ourselves about i'm not good enough and um you know i'll say you had a lot of disappointments where you'd been to a series of interviews for a certain job and, and you hadn't been successful in any of them, you would start to tell yourself that you're not worthy. So shame isn't when you've done something wrong. Um, it's, it's actually more of when you're just disappointed because you've been you feel like you've been doing so much right and you can't understand why things keep going wrong um and it's the church or the part of us um that needs to repent but not repent in the traditional sense what repent really means um internally is just to change your mind it's just to change your mind that's all repenting is it's just to say i recognize that i am acting out of shame i am be beating myself up due to past experiences and disappointments 
but all of those things have shaped me and made me become better and actually now the door that God really wanted me to go through is now the one that's right in front of me and that's the one I can go through and this was always a part of the intended divine process so it's letting go of the shame of feeling like we're not good enough and that self-doubt and it's really just being able to elevate that willpower into a place of yes I've been struck down but damn it I'm gonna get back up and I'm gonna show everyone what I'm made of because all of these disappointments have made me a much better, much stronger, much more knowledgeable, wise person. It makes us wise. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Shame makes us wise for sure. Um, and then we move on to Thyatira. So um, it's concerned with love and it's blocked by grief. It's the heart chakra. Um, the heart chakra surrounds the thymus gland. Um, and it's the church or part of us that has false prophets. So we all know that love is a very, very strong emotion indeed. Um, <laughs> I used to say to my husband when he first started saying that he loved me, <laughs> do you, but what do you love me like? Do you love me like pizza or, you know, do you love me like unconditionally? <laughs> and he's like, but I love pizza unconditionally. <laughs> right. Um, which was a very good answer, I thought. Um, but yeah, love is just this incredible thing. And, you know, it says in the Bible quite a few times that God is love. And that's such a beautiful thing because, you know, God really is love. Love empowers us to do so many incredible things. Um, and it's no coincidence, it's no mistake that that this um, chakra is in our heart, which is such a powerful organ to evoke so much change and so much positivity. Um, you know, you can act out of two things really in the world. One of them is love and the other one is fear. And I always believe that, you know, if you're making decisions based out of love for yourself and for others, then, you know, you can't really go wrong. And if, um, if everyone was doing that, dare I say, we would achieve um, the heaven on earth that I've seen in my dreams. <laughs> Kevin, we're at the uh, Kelly. We're at the top of the hour. I'd like to take another pause, really quick. Come back. Are you okay for a little while longer? Because I forgot to tell you, this show is going to last two hours. And if you can't, it's all really, really cool. How are you feeling? Um, I feel fine at the moment. We'll get through the seven chakras, then maybe tie it off and call it a night because it's Sounds it's going to be otherwise. That's right, you crossed the park. here in the UK. <laughs> That's right, and I have a very overexcited two-year-old. Ah, <laughs> I understood, understood. Okay, we take a short break. My guest was Kelly Marie Kerr. We're talking about candlesticks, chakras, and the power of seven. My name is Keith Anthony Blanchett, your host of Center Light Radio. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Center of Light Radio. I'm your host, Keith Anthony Blanchett, here with my guest, Ms. Kelly Marie Kerr. And we are speaking about candlesticks, chakras, and the power of seven. Thank you again, Kelly, for being here with this powerful information. Uh, let's pick up where we left off. Okay, let's continue on to the throat chakra. Um, so biblically, the throat chakra is referenced as the church called Sardis. Um, and it's concerned with truth and blocked by lies. It's the thyroid gland. Um, and it's the part of us or the church that has fallen asleep um, by ceasing to express its truth. Um, so we all know that famous verse, John 14, 6, that says um, God is the way, the truth and the light. So truth is, is a huge thing. You know, God, good is the truth. And we should all feel confident in expressing our truth um, but the throat chakra because it's um, because it's blocked by lies these aren't just the lies that you would think 
oh, if I tell lies, then my throat chakra will be blocked. No, it's it's got to do with a lot about how we're lied to by the media or the lies that we hear from old paradigms, old thought processes, um, the lies that we are taught to believe about ourselves because of being, you know, in negative relationships. It's the lies that, um, you know, even we just sort of make up or just believe from a very young age. There's such a different, you know, there's multiple levels of, of lying when we're talking about the throat chakra. Yes, obviously lying. Um, so basically, would you say it's just the energy of deception? Just yeah. all in, okay. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, because the truth is such a powerful weapon. Revelations goes on to talk about how the sword comes out of the mouth, the two-edged sword. And so that is our tongue. And the two edges refer to, I believe, um, the affirmation and the denial. So we can use our tongue to speak, to deny ourselves things, or we can use our tongue to speak to affirm things for ourselves. And so if we're repeating something that we've heard, but we're actually ignorant about what it really means and we haven't you know looked into it and found further knowledge then what we might be doing is just completely dis um, disempowering ourselves just by repeating things just by using our throat chakra in a negative way to it's is it because in repeating such things that we might be ignorant of it doesn't vibrate to truth therefore the chakra has no choice but to become imbalanced Yes, exactly. Wow. So we can do it completely unaware. And and I believe that that most of us and, you know, even myself, like, I don't mean even myself as in like, oh, even me, but I just mean like, you know, I, I, I know about this, but I know that I'm still doing it when I speak about things that I'm not really truly aware of. But you're and catching that's yourself. Why and that's why I believe that the Bible says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Because speaking about anything in between that we're not truly, you know, aware of, of, of its power, of, of where that comes from and what it's doing to us or other people is a, is a real power. Um, and that's what spells the word spells comes from because it's the spelling of the words that are coming from our tongue. You know, we don't want to um, manifest things that we don't actually really want just by saying, oh, did you see this on the news? This happened and that happened and blah, 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 blah. Before we know it, we might have regurgitated 15 things that actually don't come from truth. So therefore, we're denying ourselves the ability of what could happen if we were to stop for a second and say, I wonder if that's true. Um, I'm not going to repeat it until I know for sure. And it works on such a huge level because just a piece of gossip from a friend about someone, a colleague or a family member or whatever, you know, you might be doing them a huge disservice by by saying something about them that you don't actually know for sure but it works on like a much grander scale as well in you know in terms of the news and in terms of the lies that we hear about ourselves if so and so says oh kelly's not very good at that then if kelly's five years old she's going to believe i'm not very good at that and for the rest of her life her tongue her power that, th that that chakra, that energy is going to be saying, I'm not good at that. Until one day, you know, you receive this knowledge and you realize that you're perpetuating that belief, that reality within yourself. So and what, what you're saying is, for example, an event happens in the world, something that we would deem not cool and hits us in the groin, hits us in the solar plexus, punch in the throat. That if we don't know all the information behind it, did you hear what happened the other day? What we're doing is we're supporting the bullshit. 
Yeah. And keeping not only ourselves from it, because we're all d already declaring that this is what it is. We're also manipulating and deceiving other people to, b to continue to believe the bullshit. 100%. That's why I say yeah. what's happened, like I said at the beginning of the presentation, the broadcast. What yeah. you think is happening in the world isn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't. Totally. And it's addictive because um, dopamine actually comes from um, when somebody seems like intrigued in what we're saying, whether it's true or not, our brain has the exact same response. So if you're somebody who's, you know, prone to telling an elaborate story and, you know, getting a good audience for it, then you're going to be more and more prone to doing that because it's your brain enjoys it and it's sending like those good messages to your body. But what it doesn't do is manifest in the outside world in a positive way because it creates the negative outcome of what you're saying, of the lies that you're telling. Hmm. What chakra are we on, dear? Um, so Philadelphia. It's the brow chakra, which is the pituitary gland. Um, and it's the church or the part of us that has endured patiently, um, concerned with insight and blocked by illusions. So it, um, it's very closely related to the throat chakra in terms of, um, you know, illusions and lies kind of go hand in hand, but they're also, you know, different in terms of Illusions are um, what we perceive with our eyes to to be real. So, you know, something that you've seen on TV or, um, you know, I think that the flat earth, round earth um, argument is a good one to describe this chakra. <laughs> Um, because it. basically I don't know if anyone here really knows for sure <laughs> um, what which the illusion is so <laughs> it may be a triangle who knows <laughs> yeah exactly but it's letting go of the fact that it has any form whatsoever because although we perceive it as any certain shape it actually really doesn't matter because all matter is brought about by the word like it says in the beginning the was the word that's the sound vibration that created everything that we have so um the illusions are the debates about is it flat is it round is it this is it that it's all just noise noise it's just noise yeah. it doesn't matter it's irrelevant in fact we talked about everything is made up of tetrahedrons and sacred geometry so really it's yeah. not round it's all these other components that are making up that's vibrating at whatever shape it is it's, yeah it's noise it's just noise it doesn't take us further inside of ourselves to find no. the grace and the absolute truth that's holding all this together in this big illusion yeah and in my <laughs> insight i've never once seen the earth in that kind of physical way that we perceive it in our waking lives it's always in a much more 5d as you say traveling through rather than looking upon or at um yeah and then the final church is um laodicea um and it's the a wonderful pineal gland um, or the crown chakra um, and it's concerned with thought and blocked by um, attachments to earthly mortal things and beliefs um, so it's the church um, in revelation that has become lukewarm or insipid to god so um, i think it's important to say that this is where the ether um, would enter into us at the pineal and the pineal is where we see God face to face, where Jacob saw God face to face. It's where the final stage of the sacred secretion 
will come back through the optic thalamus and be transmuted to give us this experience of insight to allow us to let go of these attachments, these illusions, these lies, um, these disappointments and heartbreaks and, and fears and everything else that we've been talking about. It's the final stage, it's, it's the release. If those other six chakras have gotten to a place where you feel really calm and, and happy and, and free to flow through life, then that final chakra can really be utilized to to just I mean it, it's like a divine intuition it's like um you know it's a lot like that moving background I have in this in the the, the theater in the video light is just constantly exploding and engulfing and when like Kelly's talking about when we climb up that chakra ladder Jacob's ladder when we get to that crown chakra I mean can you imagine the epiphany that happens to a person when you just say you know just become truly enlightened that moment has to be just oh my gosh yeah yeah and um it's funny because like I said at the beginning you know people have different experiences of this um awakening uh, you can go on YouTube and look up um kundalini testimonies because that's what this is known as um, in those parts yes. of the world yeah. and you know people have got the most incredible stories to tell of what they've seen and experienced during the rising of the, the kundalini energy um, you know which is the christ oil or sacred secretion and um, some are very sad because people realize you know what we've done to ourselves and and suddenly you know have this realization of responsibility and you know other people feel euphoric um but you know it's 12 times a year so don't waste it it's the best time of the month <laughs> <laughs> kelly thank you for joining me here in center of light radio again uh yeah. you're the first person for this new platform i'm very very grateful to have been here with you um, i like what you're doing i really really like what you're doing i think it's going to carry you a long way thank you yeah, going to get the next one out there soon. <laughs> can you leave us with a closing, closing thought, something you'd like to support us in that we can implement in our lives and begin to see certain changes and get us excited so we can raise our excitement through the roof and move more diligently into it and begin to see it even greater in our lives and we begin this cyclical effect of expansion. Would you share something with us, please? Um, okay, I will read a little bit of... Um, the final translation of Revelation 1. So what the video um, all boils down to. Um, and you can get this step by step if you watch the video on YouTube. So it will make a lot more sense. But this is basically... Um, our higher conscience receives divine truths from the ruler of the universe via a rescuing oil. Our higher conscience receives divine truths that address our five, our seven physical and seven spiritual energy centers, offering them peace from the ruler of the universe. The rescuing oil is a trusted God born expression of perfection that cleanses our spirit via the blood, making us righteously governed by the ruler of the universe whom we should be thankful to and give authority to, are men. Every being will come to know of the rescuing oil and it will make them cry in awe and gladness and disbelief, for I am the infinite light and power, amen. I, I'm a loss for words. <laughs> <laughs> That is truly a sublimation of what I the 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 place I stand in in my life. It's just that was completely beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, welcome. I hope you come back here soon. Keep us posted. See you on what soon. You're doing. Okay, dear. Everyone, Kelly, would you before you go give out your contact information, how people can find more about you and what you're doing? Okay, so my um, YouTube channel is Kelly uh, Marika, just like um, it's spelt here on the screen, Kelly hyphen Marika. And um, the Seek Vision website is www.seekvision.co.uk. 
Um, and I'm also on Facebook, that's Seek Vision 33, and um, Instagram, Seek Vision, and Twitter, Seek Vision 33. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I enjoyed it. Be chatting with you again soon. Take care. All right. Everyone, Miss Kelly Marie Kerr, what a fantastic show. I, I truly wanted to just sit back and listen. I didn't want to have a dialogue, empowering stuff, because I like chatting when I know something about so myself and my guests can play conversational ping pong. When I'm ignorant, like Kelly talked about, I like being quiet. I like taking it in so I can hang on to everything and use it as future knowledge and wisdom for myself in times that may be uh, applicable applicable for someone or a said situation oh yeah i'm loving this new platform thank you for joining me 6 p.m monday night eastern time i'm here i'm here remember when you have nothing to do at night lay down going to sleep might as well breathe breathe yourself into something magnificent something you just mm, want to experience beyond what you know as you do that with passion and sincerity. And that heart chakra will open up and you will be conversating with your maker. See you next week. My guest is going to be Mr. David Matthew Brown. What a powerhouse of a light source. <laughs> Peace, love, and live in the light.